It was a new path for him, one he'd heard about before, but never ventured down. In fact, everyone had heard of this path, and most chose to avoid it. Rumors akin to a cabin in the woods. The usual late-night horror stuff he told himself. Truth be told, he hadn't wanted to venture down this path today, especially not this late, and even more so by himself. In fact, everyone had heard of this path, and most chose to avoid it. He was starting to regret that decision now. The GPS showed that he was about 8 kilometers down the path. It would soon be time to turn around, before it got too late. He looked up to the sky. He still had probably two hours until the sun would begin to set. He turned his gaze back down to the path before him. To his astonishment, he saw a cabin in the distance. Had that been there before? It couldn't have just materialized out of thin air, right? He shook off the idea. Must just be his mind playing tricks on him. He approached the cabin. Only as he got nearer did he notice something strange about it. It appeared to be built almost entirely from rope. He saw something move on the roof of the house. It looked like a child. As he looked back down, he saw three more figures coming from the side of the house. He stared at them. What were they? His phone slipped out of his hand and clattered to the ground. The figure on the roof turned at the sound and lost its footing. It fell from the roof and hit the ground with an awful thud. Oh God, he thought to himself. Was he okay? He looked injured. He ran forward to the group now surrounding the body on the ground. They appeared to be a family. He felt awful. As he reached them, it dawned on him. They weren't human. They seemed to be covered in some kind of clay. Their eyes were buttons and fingers sharp, rusted needles. Their hair seemed to be made from cotton or silk. They crowded around the boy who had fallen from the roof. What had he done? He tried to apologize, but they ignored him, seemingly focused on helping the boy on the floor. He tried to peek over them, but couldn't see the extent of the injuries. Something came flying out of the group. Then another piece, and another. He looked on the ground. It appeared like bits of clay and yarn. Were they removing his clothes? How bad were his injuries? More bits came flying out. Now silk and sections of rope? They suddenly stopped, a small pile of material on the ground besides them. I'm so sorry, is he okay? The figure, which appeared to be the father, stood up and looked at him, his expression blank. The rest stood up behind him. He feared what they would do next, but instead, they just walked past him. What in the world was going on? He turned back to look at the boy. Welcome back. Today I bring you SCP-670, Family of Cotton. Please remember to subscribe. And back across the pond we go. Maybe this time Stonehenge? Maybe this time work? Boring. Come on, one day. Just one day. Are you an agent or a child, Chen? I'm not your guardian. Can we just discuss a little work now? Fine. After the hiker got home, he reported the incident to the authorities, hence why we're on a plane. Has anyone interacted with them since? Negative. They've set a wide cordon and surveillance is up, but since the incident, they haven't left their house. Alright, let me catch some Z's before we land. Good idea. I might get something to drink before turning in. It's getting late. Uh, do you want anything? Chen? Chen! The small rope cabin stood quietly, just as it had been when the hiker had found it. The pile of cotton, silk, and rope was nowhere to be seen. It was a family of four, but from what the hiker told us, it's now three. The boy who fell off the roof? Yes, it seems there wasn't much left after the family gathered around him. From the sounds of it, the injuries must have been pretty severe. Of course, it's all speculation as we don't know what they are. Alright, family of three it is. Chen knocked on the door. A moment later, it opened slightly. Yes, may I help you? Hi, we're here regarding the incident the other day. Incident? What incident? Your son. I'm very sorry for your loss. 
I'm sorry. I haven't a clue what you're referring to. The accident? Your son. He fell off the roof. I really don't know what you're talking about. My son is fine. The man opened the door. Behind him stood a woman and two children. Klaus looked to Chen. Um, I'll need to ask you to come with us. The man frowned, but nodded his head. All right, I think I understand who you are. We'll come quietly. We aren't dangerous. The agents escorted them out the door. They seem, well, pretty chill and friendly. Indeed, very courteous. I still don't understand what happened to the boy, though. Either the hiker is mistaken about the severity of the boy's injuries, or something else is at play here. Have, have they requested anything? Just some materials. Cotton, rope, silk. For crafting. Have they made anything? Yeah. A knife, TV, bicycle, and I guess some food? Did you say a knife? Yeah. It's been confiscated, though. Floss pressed the intercom. Mr. Um, Cotton. Yes, sir. How may I assist you? Did you craft a knife? Indeed, I did. You are aware that no violence will be tolerated. Violence? Oh, oh, no, no. Dear me, I do apologize. Rats, you see. Rats? Yes, I've spotted them during the night. Nasty creatures, you know. Okay, but please, just let us know next time. Righto. Sorry again. You buy it? Perhaps. I have seen the odd rat around here myself. Did you find anything else about the boy? Nope. Still doesn't know what we're talking about. Hmm. Mr. Cotton. Sir? Do you have any other relatives? My wife and two children, Daniel and Elizabeth. What about parents? Oh, you mean Granddad Cotton. Can't say I remember much, to be honest. He passed a long time ago. When exactly were you born? Oh, dear me. Memory isn't what it used to be. I'd have to say... 1850? Give or take 40 years. Interesting. That's all for now. Thank you. Righto. What you thinking? That I wish Pythia was here. She might be able to shed some light on this situation. Next move? Let's hang tight for a day or two, continue interrogation, and see if something comes up. Sir, there's been an incident with SCP-670. What happened? Situation is ongoing. The, the son, Daniel, seems to have sustained an injury. The family surrounded him, but they're blocking surveillance. Was the incident captured on CCTV? Yes, sir. Let's take a look, quickly. The family was sitting down for dinner. The wife presented a roast chicken made from the materials supplied. Cotton, silk, and rope. There. Did you see that? What happened? Rewind it. The boy had cut his leg with his own finger. A few strands of cotton unwound. You see that? He's trying to cover it up. A moment later, the boy stood up, but stumbled. The father grabbed his hand as the rest of the family stood up. They pulled him to the ground and surrounded him, blocking the CCTV. Let's get to their cell, now! Mr. Cotton, please step away from Daniel! Mr. Cotton! The father stood up and walked towards the glass. How may I assist you? Daniel, what did you do to him? I'm not sure what you mean. We saw you pulling him apart! Apart, sir? Don't deny it! I can see the pile in the corner! What did you do to Daniel? I'm sorry, but who's Daniel? Who's Daniel? Who's Daniel? Your son! Your son, Daniel! I'm very sorry, but I don't know any Daniel. My son is Alfie. SCP-670 is comprised of four roughly humanoid individuals, 670-1-2-3 and-4, who refer to themselves collectively as the Cotton Family. Dash 1 and 2 appear to be the father and the mother of the family, judging by their height and comments made in interviews, while Dash 3 and Dash 4 are the children of the family. Members of SCP-670 possess a thin outer layer of hardened clay skin, showing signs of deterioration from over a long length of time. Under this, the organs, flesh, and nervous system are composed entirely of different types of thread. The majority of the thread used is cotton, 
but large amounts of silk and polyester are also present. Small amounts of rayon and nylon are also noted in the internal organs. The skeleton is composed of rope, knotted into a suitable shape, and the fingers of 670 members seem to be rusted sewing needles. The family unit collectively referred to as SCP-670 is currently contained at Sector 25, located in England. Members of 670 are to be contained in a shared 12 meter by 6 meter holding cell observed via surveillance camera. Cell is to contain four beds, a bathroom, and an observation window. All staff entering 670's containment area are to be searched for lighters, matches, and other sources of open flames. Family, the pinnacle of our humanity. Never take it for granted, as it isn't easily replaced. As always, have a care, and remember to subscribe, like, and share, if you would. Until next time, farewell.